All right, so we are in the book of Ruth, chapter number two. And let me give you some context for the content here. Uh, chapter one, Ruth, uh, not Ruth, chapter one, uh, Naomi is married to a man named Elimelech. And Elimelech experienced a famine in um, Bethlehem, which is the house of bread. Isn't that ironic how sometimes you can be in the right place and things are not working out right? Right? It, that's important to know because sometimes we feel like we're in the wrong place and things aren't working out right. But you can be in the right place and sometimes things don't work out right. Uh, uh, and because they were, they were in the right place and they felt like it was the wrong place, they said, we are out of here. And they left uh, the house of bread, uh, the house of God where people were worshiping God and they went to Moab. Now, this is important to note that Moab was a place of uh, enemy territory. So if there's any Packers fans here today, we'll have a prayer line for you later on, uh, but that's like wearing your Packers stuff into the Vikings stadium. You know, you, know, you are, are testing something, okay? Something's about to happen and uh, it may or may not work in your favor, okay? So, um, they went to this foreign land, in this land where their enemies were, and when they got there, uh, their sons took Moab, uh, uh, Moabites, wives, and they took two. One was Orpah, and the other one's name was Ruth. And the Bible says that soon after, the, the father died, and then the sons died, and then these three women are left alone. And, um, Naomi hears that God is still doing miracles in the middle of the family because God doesn't need resources to do something in your life because he's not a resource. He is the source. So God, I would rather have nothing with God than everything without him. And he said, I would rather have nothing. Come here with me, Houston. Don't make me close one more door. I don't want to hurt anymore. I would rather have nothing with God than have everything without him. I say, oh, yeah, that sounds good, right? Uh, uh, hypothetically speaking, but no, I need somebody. But let me tell you something. Here's what happens. When you have God, he will supply for you everything you need. I wish I had a few witnesses here today. And I understood that there were moments in my life where my friends were not standing by my side, but God was there. Uh -huh. There were moments in the pandemic when I wasn't working, but I went to the refrigerator regularly and there was Uh, deal with this anymore, so I want to change my name and I want and I 
told you last week, whatever you do, do not let a moment define your mentality, right? But thank God, she said, uh, don't call me Naomi anymore, but call me Mara. But here's what I love about it. You never see the word Mara again in this whole book. Because the people around her knew, you're tripping right now. And I'm not going to follow what you're telling me to do. Uh-huh, because sometimes when you are in the middle of pain, you speak. Yes. 
get just what you need. You're about to receive exactly what you need. The call that you've been waiting on is getting ready to come. The door that you've been waiting to open is getting ready to open. The blessing that you've been waiting on, God says you don't even know it. It's getting ready to happen. You don't even know. You, you've given up, but God says, no, you've given up too quick. Because in the middle of a bad situation, I can turn around. Okay, let me go so we can read the Bible. Now Naomi had a relative of her husband. And the Bible says this man was not a regular man. He was a worthy man of the clan of a Levite, whose name was Boaz. Now let me stop. In the King James Version, the word you probably see there is kinsman. When you use the word kin, what does that word kin mean? Family. Yeah, family. Yeah. It means that's my kin folk, that's my family, that's my blood, okay? That's that. So when we see this term kinsmen here, he is saying this is a part of my family. But this word kinsmen is not just he's a part of my family. It's saying he's a special part of my family that has more wealth, that has more abundance, that's got more resources than I have. So he's somebody that I can turn to when I need help. Okay? So the Bible says that that's who he is. And then Ruth, the Moabite, said to Naomi, she said, let me go to the fields so I may glean among the ears of corn after him in whose sight I shall find favor. That's good. Uh-huh. She said, I may be broke, but I'm still looking for favor. The most 
beg God. You don't have to beg God. The Bible says that uh, 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 that God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you ask or think. In other words, God is telling me and you to stop asking for crumbs. Come on, come on. Stop, stop just asking for the basics. God says, I have all this abundance that's available to you and the distance between what you have and what you can receive is asking. The distance between being a part of the business and owning the business is asking. Uh -huh. The difference between
whether you make as much money to as me or whether you don't, you matter to God. Whether you're a Republican and I'm a Democrat, you matter, uh, you mean something to God. Whether you're a Democrat and I'm a Republican, you matter to God. Whether you support the, the, the uh, uh, person who is the president now or you think that uh, other guy is still the president, well, we'll pray for you about that. But listen, it will, if you're welcome here as well, Says, the Bible says that they said that to him, 
And then Boaz says to the young man, he says, now the first thing was about the Lord, right? He right. said, his first words are, are what? The Lord be with you. And then they said what to him? The Lord, what? Bless you. And in verse number five, what does Boaz say? Boaz says, and Boaz said to his young man who was in charge of the reapers, he said, what? He says, who? Who's your lady is this? <laughs> now, if you're anything like me, my imagination goes wild when I hear this. Because the Bible doesn't have, you don't get to hear it's home with the Bible. So he could have been like, who's your lady is this? Or he could have been like, who's your lady is this? <laughs> you, you see what I'm saying? He, he could have been like, or he could have been like, who is that? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and based on how the book is getting ready to go, this brother was like, who is that? <laughs> I need to know who, who that is. Okay? I need to know. Okay? Okay? Excuse me, this. Okay? I need to know who you are. Okay? I, I, I need to know. Okay? Come on, you preach. I, 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 I need to. You have to have the initiative. Notice at the end of the chapter. 
the, the Bible says nobody told Ruth to go out and do this. She just had something on the inside of her that said, yeah. I'm not going to sit in this house and die. She said, I'm not going to sit here and be scrolling on Instagram and watch everybody else.
that society has pushed or 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 made uh, people step into. But it's like, well, you certainly have the ability to do it. But just because you have the ability to do it doesn't mean you should do it. Oh, yeah. right? Father's that. Day is coming out next Sunday, and let me tell you something: if you walk in here next Sunday and you say uh, uh, we celebrate the Father's Day, you walk up here and you say you, the mother and the father, we might have security up here. <laughs> Because you, okay? you are not the Lord. You are not the Father. I have read you, Lord. You are not the Come on. Y'all laugh because you know it's true. Yeah. When was the last time on Mother's Day you heard a man say, Give me, give me my flowers.